My name is Benjamin Dome, and I will be presenting labral reconstruction in the hip using the knotless pull-through technique. The indications presently for reconstruction may include segmental loss of the labrum, a calcified labrum, a failed labral debridement, or a failed previous repair in the revision setting. We've previously published research indicating that arthroscopic labral reconstruction is superior to segmental resection for irreparable labral tears in the hip. In this study, demonstrating outcomes in a matched pair controlled cohort study design with minimum two-year follow-up. So the evidence for reconstruction in cases of the irreparable or absent labrum or the failed labral repair includes the biomechanical evidence. We know that the labrum is critical to the function of the hip. The level two clinical evidence, we've seen that labral reconstruction is superior to debridement. And common sense, the hip was made with a labrum for a reason, and we believe that reason to be acting as a seal against the femoral head, sealing the lubricant fluid in the joint, and maintaining the hydraulic distribution of forces across the hip joint. So I'll proceed to the case in which we performed labral reconstruction, which I'll present today. He had three years of increasing pain. He had undergone a left hip arthroscopy at an outside institution, which included a labral repair, but continued to have pain and was unable to play due to the extent of his pain. On physical exam, his flexion was 90 degrees, internal rotation was 5 degrees, external rotation was 45 degrees, and he had positive anterior and lateral impingement. The arthroscopic findings included an irreparable complex tear of the labrum after labral repair. So we approached this problem with a labral reconstruction using the knotless pull-through technique. First, we prepare the rim. So we've removed the degenerative previously repaired labrum and prepared the entirety of the rim. And this will be a circumferential labral reconstruction using the knotless pull-through technique. Next, we place the knotless suture tack anchors all the way around the rim. So these are placed circumferentially spaced about six millimeters apart. Here we are posteriorly and there we are anteriorly. Next, we shuttle the tendon graft into the joint. In this case, this is a tibialis anterior graft. And next, we will pass the sutures around the graft and anchor the graft in order from anterior to posterior. So these knotless suture tack anchors are very easy to repair after the placement of the graft. We can simply pass and pull through, pass and pull through. Each Anchor is uh, loaded in order after the passage of the graft and the passage of the suture around the graft and then tensioned to the desired tension. So you see we're fixating the graft with the pre-placed anchors from anterior to posterior. We make sure that we have the appropriate tension on the graft as we go. Note that the graft has not been sized. We have a, about a 30 centimeter graft here. Uh, this is a tibialis anterior allograft. And now that we've completed the graft, we can amputate the excess graft, and that has been amputated from the posterior end. So circumferential labral reconstruction, we take traction off, and we see that we've restored the seal of the labrum against the femoral head. In this case, we also performed a revision femoroplasty. It is our belief that the goal of a femoroplasty is to aim for perfect sphericity in all aspects. So you can see the AP view before and after at the top left and top right, and the done view before and after at the bottom left and bottom right. Before surgery, on the left side, you see on both views we have asphericity. There is lateral cam and there is anterolateral cam. After the femoroplasty, we've created a spherical femoral head, and this appears spherical on all views, importantly, so that we address all angles of possible impingement, including lateral impingement and anterior impingement. It's important with the labral reconstruction using the knotless pull-through technique to evaluate the reconstruction, which is when we release traction and confirm the seal against the femoral head. That is seen before and after here on the right. 
To conclude, I'll provide an algorithm for how to approach evaluating a labrum arthroscopically. First, we evaluate whether the labrum is viable. If the labrum is not viable, then we need to consider a labral debridement and we'll perform a selective labral debridement. After the labral debridement is performed, we'll want to consider a labral reconstruction because we have seen that labral reconstruction is superior to selective debridement. If the labrum is viable, then we'll try to preserve the labrum. And we uh, will establish how much of a rim trimming needs uh, to be performed. If more than two millimeters of acetabular rim recession is performed, then we'll perform a labral refixation. If a, only a very small amount of acetabuloplasty is performed, then we can evaluate whether the labrum is stable. And if it is stable, we may consider an acetabuloplasty without repair. If it is not stable, or again, if more than two millimeters of rim is trimmed, uh, then uh, we move on through the algorithm. Now, we evaluate whether more than five millimeters is trimmed. If the answer is no, if it's less than five millimeters, then generally we'll perform a labral repair without detachment of the chondrolabral junction. However, if more than five millimeters of rim is recessed, then we may consider a labral detachment uh, to resect excess cartilage and uh, subsequent refixation. So in summary, in approaching the torn labrum, we need to have in our armamentarium a number of techniques, including anatomic labral repair, using the labral base refixation technique, and using the controlled tension anatomic technique. It is also important to have in our armamentarium a labral reconstruction technique, and the knotless pull-through technique, whether for segmental or circumferential labral reconstruction, provides a reproducible and accurate way of restoring a labral seal against the femoral head. And this anatomic repair or reconstruction will allow for preservation of the labral function. Thank you very much.